When Ratchnuk Intonon won the World Championships in 2013, at just 18 years old, becoming the youngest ever women's singles champion, she kickstarted a revolution in the discipline. As since the 2013 World Championships, it seems more and more insanely talented players started to emerge on the scene from a variety of nations. And not just that they had great talent, they were also doing some remarkable things at a very young age. Not long after those worlds, Akane Yamaguchi became the youngest ever winner of a Super Series, winning her home event, the Japan Open, aged 16 years, 3 months and 16 days. During the 2019 season, aged just 17, current world number one Ang Seung defeated two Olympic champions in two big finals. She defeated Lee Jure, the 2012 Olympic champion, at the New Zealand Open, and then defeated Carolina Marin later in the year, who was the reigning Olympic champion at the time in the French Open. And even more recently than that, we have seen other superstars in the making win senior titles at a very young age. Pichamon Opa Nippoth of Thailand, Tomoka Miyazaki of Japan, and Unati Huda of India are three players who have all won senior titles by the age of 16 and look set to make a name for themselves in the near future. But whilst all of this is insanely impressive, there was a player in the 1990s who, when it comes to achieving ridiculous things at an early age, simply blows these players out of the water. And that player is Mir Ordina of Indonesia. By the time Mir Ordina had only just turned 17, she achieved five things that most players will never achieve for an entire career. And it's those five things that made her a badminton prodigy and gave her the title of the original Wonder Kid. Mi Odina was born on the 22nd of August 1979 in Jakarta, Indonesia, to parents Rivan Chiptawan and Lani Susilawati. Her father, Rivan, was obsessed with badminton, idolising Indonesian greats such as Ferry Sonneville, Tanjo Hock, and later Rudy Hartono. Rivan desperately wanted his children to be badminton superstars, and whilst failing with his second born son, seemed to strike gold with Mia. From the age of just two and a half, she was trained seriously by her father, who reportedly sacrificed his business to the tune of hundreds of millions of rupiah, which in the 1980s was a lot of money, all to help make Mia a great champion. This early training and dedication, coupled with an insurmountable amount of talent, led to Mia achieving great success very early, making her way into the top Indonesian junior team at under 19 level before becoming a teenager. And it's there where she achieved the first of her many crazy achievements. In 1992, a new badminton championship was to be established for junior players, the World Junior Championships. Well, I say new, the tournament had actually been held every year since 1987 in Indonesia under the name Binmantara World Badminton Junior Invitation Championships. But following its 91 edition, the BWF decided to make it an official event. With the BWF backing this tournament, it certainly gave it more weight and prestige, with it immediately becoming the pinnacle of a junior player's career. At these inaugural World Junior Championships, a number of future World Olympic champions were present. Players like Gu Jun, Sun Jun, Kim Dong Moon, and Chandra Wijaya. Amongst these future superstars was Mia Rodina. At the time, Mia had just turned 13 and was the youngest competitor at the championships. But as you can probably guess from the theme of this video, age was certainly not a factor for her, as by the end of the championships, she didn't just win one medal, but two. Winning bronze in both the girls' singles and the girls' doubles, Mirodina became the youngest medalist in the history of the World Junior Championships, a record still held today. Now, I'd be remiss to say that at age 14, Ratchnuk Intonon of Thailand, the player I mentioned right at the beginning of this video, won the World Junior Championships, a truly phenomenal feat, only topped by the fact that she went on to win the title three consecutive years. But I feel Mir's achievement is on a similar level, as she was younger and medalled in two different disciplines. But comparing Mia against the likes of Ratchnuk at this event, 
would never happen, as Mir never played the World Juniors again. And that was for the simple reason that whilst Ratchnut was winning her first World Junior title age 14, at the same age, Mir Adina was winning World Senior titles. At the age of 14, Mia Aldina was already a member of the Indonesian senior team, a feat which is often understated, because at the time Indonesia had many amazing players in their women's singles team, with one of them being none other than the reigning world and Olympic champion, Susie Sazanti. If you combine that with the difficult selection process for making the national team in Indonesia, then Mia's inclusion in the Indonesian senior team is impressive. But that isn't one of the five amazing things she did, as her inclusion in the team pales in comparison to what Mia did in her very first year as a member of the Indonesian senior team. In 1994, Indonesia were to play host for the Thomas and Uber Cup Finals, a very prestigious event. It is the World Men's and Women's Team Championships. With the prestige, the fact Indonesian were the home team and the little fact that badminton is Indonesia's national sport, then you can get a slight sense of the magnitude of this tournament. As the tournament reached its climax, Indonesia found themselves in the final. And in that final, they were to face China, the top seeds and heavy favourites. Not only that, but ever since China had first participated in the Uber Cup in 1984, they had never lost. A pretty formidable opponent for Indonesia to face. As the match progressed, it became a tense and close affair, with Indonesia going 2-0 up, only for China to draw it level at 2-all, making it all come down to the deciding third singles. At third singles for Indonesia, Mia Ordina. At age just 14, she had the weight of the nation on her shoulders. Just because she was 14 didn't mean the Indonesian crowd felt she shouldn't be able to bring home the glory. She had won at third singles in the semi-final against Korea, but that match was technically over by then, so the pressure was nowhere near the same. But with all that pressure, all that expectation, Mia Rodina delivered the winning point for Indonesia, gifting them the Uber Cup title and breaking the Chinese stronghold on the trophy. Now, winning the Uber Cup for your nation defeating a previously undefeated team in front of an incredibly passionate home crowd at the tender age of 14 is probably enough for you to sit there and think, wow. But that is not all. There is something about this final that for me takes all I've just said and magnifies it by 1000. In the second game, having won the first, Miradina found herself 10-6 up, championship point. She was cruising and looked set to take the title there and then. Until this happened. All Mia had to do was play the shuttle into court and she would have won, but instead she put it in the net. This error seemed to have a real knock on Mia, as following it she lost a string of very quick points and then lost the game, much to the surprise of the crowd and commentators and much to the dismay of Mia herself. Now, in this sort of situation, even if you're a seasoned veteran with plenty of experience, picking yourself up would be incredibly hard. There have been countless times where an athlete in any sport has blown a big lead and from there it all goes downhill. So, the fact that Miradina didn't let the second game derail her is to me more impressive than the win itself. In fact, Mia didn't just hold herself together, she came out in the third game even stronger, absolutely obliterating Zhang Ning in the third game. That 1994 win, more so performance, leaves me at a loss for words, but as impressive as it was, two years later in 1996, Mir would achieve three things that are downright ridiculous. By the time the next Thomas and Uber Cup finals were to be held, it was 1996. Mir Adina was 16 years old and had moved up within the team, now playing at second singles. In the Uber Cup, second women's singles is a crucial role. 
It can be the first time a team has a chance to secure the overall match. It could be a match to keep a team still in the tie. And it could also sway the match strongly in a nation's favour. Mir Odina delivered that role perfectly at this Euro Cup. In the semi-finals, Mir won the overall match for Indonesia against Korea, a team who were not just the heavy favourites overall, but especially the favourite in Mir's match. In that semi-final, she faced Kim Ji-hyun, a player who defeated her in their three previous meetings. Combine this with Mir being heavily strapped up due to injury, it seemed maybe she couldn't be the heroine again. But after a brutal 63 minute match, Mir was just that, clinching the match for Indonesia and sending them into the final where they once again faced China. In that final, Mir delivered another winning point, defeating Wang Chen, a player three years Mir senior and a player who had won the World Junior Championships only two years previous. The 1996 Uber Cup is not as memorable to most as the 1994 one, as it didn't have the same nail-biting conclusion, but Mia's role within it was certainly on a similar level. Yes, she was two years older, but the pressure was still there, maybe even more so, as now there were even more expectations. And let's not forget, while she was two years older, Mia was still only 16. At just 16 years old, Mia Adina was now a two-time world champion, and at both of those championships she had delivered crucial matches under severe pressure. On top of this, by Indonesia retaining their Uber Cup crown, they are still the only nation in the history of the competition in the modern era, other than China, to have done so. But as you can see, up until this point, when it came to achieving insane things in the senior ranks, it was under team event conditions. However, later that year, that was all about to change. In 1996, the Olympics were to be held in Atlanta in the USA. And heading into those Olympics, Miradina was seen as an outsider for the medals. I think following her Uber Cup exploits earlier in the year, the fact she had reached a couple of big tournament finals, plus just her incredibly high top level game, people felt that if she could bring it all together at the right time, then an Olympic medal was a possibility. But having said that, with her being still only 16 years old and these Olympics being stacked with the world's best, including the two players who contested the previous Olympic final, no one expected her to do what she did. Because on August 1st, 1996, Mir Adina contested the Olympic final. At just 16 years old, Mir became the youngest badminton player to ever contest a final in the history of the event, in any discipline. In that final, Mir was no match for Bang Soo Hyun, who avenged her 1992 Olympic final loss, defeating Mir 11-6-11-7. Und da ist es passiert. Die Goldmedaille geht nach Korea. But regardless, the simple fact that Mir reached the final of the highest tournament in not just badminton, but sport, is truly mesmerizing. This, to me, is probably her greatest ever achievement as a junior. I say that because you so often see athletes struggle to deliver at the majors, and there's nothing more major than the Olympics. Mir did deliver, and not just at the age of 16, but in her first ever Olympics. That, to me, makes it doubly impressive. Now, I do stand by that statement. The Olympic silver in 96 being the number one achievement from Mia's youth. But there is one other thing Mia did that is a very close second. And that is that on November 7th, 1996, aged 17 years, two months and 16 days, Mia Adina ascended the world rankings, becoming the youngest player in all of badminton to do so, a record she still holds firmly today. What makes this achievement so special is twofold. Firstly, to win or reach a final in a one-off tournament, no matter how big, like the Olympics, is impressive, but it only requires a player to peak once. To reach world number one requires a high level of consistency over a one-year period. Throughout 1995 and 1996, Mir Adina was consistently reaching the latter stages of major tournaments. The other reason this is impressive is done best if I show you. This is the top 10 when Mia topped the rankings. As you can see, it is stacked with world and Olympic champions, both past and soon to be. At two and three, you had both Olympic champions, Susie Sazanti and Bang Soo Hyun. 
At 4 you had the current world champion Ye Zhao Ying, and at 5 you had a future world champion and Olympic silver medalist Camilla Martin. Above all of those was Mia Rodina, a 17 year old. That is crazy. Oh, and to put this into perspective with the players I mentioned right at the start, whilst An Siung, Akane Yamaguchi and Ratchet Intonen have all been world number one, none of them are in the top 10 of youngest world number ones. So there you have it, five extraordinary things that Mira Dina achieved before she would have technically been out of the junior ranks. Two medals at the World Juniors age 13, the youngest medalist in the tournament's history, winning the decisive match for her country at the Uber Cup, ending China's undefeated 10 year streak at aged 14. I believe this makes her the youngest active member of a Uber Cup winning team. She played a pivotal role in Indonesia, becoming only the second nation to ever retain the Uber Cup at age 16. She reached the Olympic final, also age 16, the youngest player to do so. And finally, she became world number one, once again becoming the youngest player in the history of Bam to do that too. All five are crazy achievements, and all five are records in their own right that still stand today. However, I know what you are probably thinking right now. If Miradina achieved all of this by the time she was 17, she must have gone on to achieve even bigger and even better things later in her career, right? Well, it would be untrue to say she didn't achieve more great things, but it's also fair to say she didn't have the kind of career you might have guessed she'd have had following 1996. In 1998, following the Uber Cup, she married a Dutchman and emigrated to the Netherlands. She became a Dutch citizen and continued playing, winning a world bronze medal in 2003, reaching another Olympic final in 2004, won the European Championship double in 2004, and helped Netherlands to a historic Uber Cup final in 2006. Ending her career in 2006, Mir Odina will always be remembered as the definition of a child prodigy. She is the original wonder kid. And although she didn't quite live up to the expectations, the fact she never won a major is rather stark, she still achieved some absolutely incredible things. None more so than the five I've laid out in this video, which when you consider everything, are not just simply out of this world, but I doubt we'll ever see them repeated.